Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today, I've got an interesting video idea for you. I'd love to hear your feedback on uh, which things you think meet the criteria here in a second. I was watching Drakinefell's video where he interviewed Captain Sequest. Uh, Captain Sequest was the second commanding officer of Iowa during the 1980s. And one of the lines in the interview that really struck out to me uh, was, I'm not going to be able to quote him directly, but uh, to paraphrase, a lot of people say that the Iowas were uh, really old ships or dinosaurs or obsolete when they were reactivated in the 80s. Uh, but he always thought that they were absolutely state-of-the-art and uh, that that was in part because they had been so state-of-the-art when they were built. And that really got me thinking about uh, some of the aspects of the Iowa class battleships that were really forward looking. Um, and so we're gonna talk about the three things that I think were so forward looking on these ships uh, that led to them being continuously reactivated and used into the 90s. Normally, a ship like this would have about a 20 or 25 year um, shelf life before programmed obsolescence takes over. And in theory, you're constantly building new ships. So once you've built replacements, you get rid of the old one. It, it's obsolete. Obviously, the United States didn't build any more battleships after the Iowa class. So there was no other ship that could fulfill the shore bombardment role. However, I wouldn't say that our gun systems are innovative or unique in any way. Um, in reality, if the Navy wanted to reactivate a South Dakota or a North Carolina class battleship, an Alaska class large cruise, or any of these other types of ships, not only do they have a similar enough gunnery system and fire control system, uh, they, they could conduct that shore bombardment role for cheaper. Uh, so what is it about the Iowa class that was so forward looking at the time of their launch that made these ships be brought back? The first thing, is the propulsion. We're here in engine room number two on Battleship New Jersey, which you can visit during some of our guided tours. The Iowa class battleships are the fastest battleships ever built. The fact that they were designed to attain a speed of 33 knots, which is roughly the speed of the modern day fleet, is what makes them special. Uh, older battleships could do 21 knots. That was the fleet speed during World War I. During World War II, our slower, fast battleships were doing 27 knots. That was the standard speed. But our aircraft carriers, cruisers, destroyers, the other ships that are now forming the fast strike forces are able to do 30 plus knots. So the fact that the Iowa class can do over 30 knots is what um, was a really forward looking thing of their designs that allowed them to continue to come back because they can continue to operate at the speed of the modern fleet. The fact that the U.S. Navy was able to get this much power out of a ship of the size of the Iowa's, that they were able to shrink the turbines down uh, to this size to fit in here, is really special, and, and it's why the Iowa class was feasible to build at this speed. And propulsive power isn't the only thing in the engine room that makes these ships unique. Electrical power generation is the other ones. We did a video not that long ago, uh, we'll link it in the description below if you've missed it, about how the Iowa class has the greatest power generation capability of any battleships during World War II. Uh, I suspect they have the greatest power generation capability of any ship built at that time. Uh, they, they're incredibly capable of creating power. Um, we have eight of these 1250 kilowatt turbo generators for a total of 10,000 kilowatts that the ship can produce. That is enough for a city of 20,000 people. Without this power generating capability, if we had half of this capability like Yamato or a third of this capability like King George V, there is no way that the Iowa class gets reactivated again because the new equipments, the new radars, radios, fire control systems, the missile systems, none of these new systems could be added because the ship didn't generate enough power to be able to control them, to, to operate them. So the fact that these ships made this much power on day one 
meant that they were able to accept the larger and larger systems being added. It's telling that the Navy didn't replace these with larger units in the 80s. These are the original ones down here. I'm not sure that they could have replaced them if they wanted to. So the fact that these ships generated 10,000 kilowatts of power is incredibly important and is one of the main reasons why these ships were able to be reactivated. That is more power generation than the North Carolinas, the Sodaks, the Alaskas, any of those. And the final thing that I think was important was the surface area of these ships. That is also a way in which these ships differ greatly from the North Carolinas, the South Dakotas, the Alaskas, any of those other nearly comparable ships. Uh, even going back to the Des Moines class cruisers or, or the Baltimore and Oregon City class cruisers uh, that were providing some of that fire support role as well. The Iowa class battleships are just larger. They have both more deck area for new equipment to be added and more reserve of buoyancy for weight to be added. There are a finite number of things that you can add to Salem or Baltimore or Massachusetts or Alabama before um, those ships can no longer take that and you have to start removing things. With the Iowa class, that threshold is much higher. So again, when it came to retrofitting on newer systems, the Navy was just much more able to do that on ships like the Iowa class. This extra size also meant there was more room for uh, crew living spaces so that as accommodations were expected to improve over time, you were able to actually install those on the Iowa class, whereas older battleships did not have nearly as much room for crew spaces. The World War II era aircraft carriers like the Essex class, despite being ubiquitous, were eventually made obsolete because they could no longer handle the newest aircraft. They, they weren't big enough. They could carry 100 propeller planes in World War II, but they, they couldn't handle the most modern jet aircraft that were coming online 20 or 30 years later. And so the US Navy started designing super carriers that were just so much bigger, uh, nearly three times the displacement um, that gave them the room to grow, to continue to accept more powerful electronics, more powerful aircraft. In reality, the Iowa class should be known as super battleships because they're one third bigger than the previous battleships in the US Navy. And that extra size gives them the ability to be upgraded over time. That's the reason why uh, some of our sister battleships of the World War II era only served for a couple of years, four or five years, while the Iowa class was able to continue to be dominant 50 years after construction. So what do you think? Is there anything I'm missing on this list that made the Iowa class super forward looking? Let us know in the comment section down below. What are some aspects of the design that you think are super backwards looking that didn't help the Iowa class evolve? Let us know that in the comment section too. And let us know if you wanna see us make a video on that in the future. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to donate to support the museum. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find about us in the channel. Thanks for watching.